Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, Senior Technical Evangelist with Dremio, and here I wanted to do is just walk through the exercise in this blog from Postgres to Dashboards with Dremio and Apache Iceberg. And uh, yeah, all you need is you do need to have Docker installed. I do recommend having six gigs of memory allocated to Docker for an exercise like this one. And otherwise, once you have Docker installed, you can go to docker.com. Uh, the rest should be pretty straightforward. You can just follow the blog. The first thing we need to do is just create. So here I have VS Code as my code editor, and I'm just going to create a file in a blank folder called Docker Compose YAML. This is these Docker Compose YAML files are used to define our environments. So I can just copy this code right here, right from the blog, paste that right into the Docker Compose YAML file here. Okay, and this defines the services I'll need for this exercise. Okay. Right now, all I really need is Postgres. So I could just spin up all the different services just by doing, doing Docker Compose up. But really, right now, I'm going to just first populate Postgres. So I'm going to do Docker Compose up Postgres. And that's going to start off the Postgres container. So right now, it's pulling the container from Docker Hub. So that'll just take a moment. So I'll do a quick pause while it pulls the container down. OK, so now once the Postgres container is started up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another terminal. So I'm going to click right over here to create another terminal. And that way I can run this command right here. This is going to end up starting my post, put me inside the, 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 the Postgres uh, CLI. So that way I can actually run some commands against that Postgres database. Okay, here I am inside the Postgres CLI and now I can pass it some SQL just to create our example sample data. So I'm going to hit create table. I'll just literally copy this create table statement. Actually, I'll just copy this whole thing. Boop. And it'll run both SQL statements. Just paste that right in there. Okay, we'll run that SQL. And let's see here. It didn't like this. Let's do it one at a time then. Paste. Okay, serial ID, serial primary key. That don't mean that looks all good to me, but. Let's run that again. Okay. Let's just first copy it over here. So what I'll do is I'll just create a quick uh, scratch.sql just to copy this into there. See, maybe there's just unseen characters that are causing the problem. Do not know, int not know. All of this looks fine. Create table sales data. Okay, yeah, so I just didn't like some of the spacing in there. Uh, although it still looks fine to me, but okay. So what I did basically I did is I just copied it into this SQL validator and just removed this, basically moved all the line breaks because for some reason it did not like the line breaks. That validated just fine. Okay, so this should be good. Okay, and I'll hit paste in there. And then we get we insert it into that table. Perfect. So once we successfully run those two uh, SQL queries, we're good to go. We're done here. And basically to quit out of Postgres, you just do the slash then Q for quitting. That'll take you out of there. And now we're out of that. So now that we have data in the Postgres database that's running, the next step is to actually set up Postgres, uh, Nessie, Minio, and Dremio. So I'm going to set up Postgres uh, Minio and Dremio by just doing docker compose up and I want to specify Dremio, Minio, Nessie. Those are the three things I want. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dash D here. What that does is just going to basically, instead of me using up a whole other terminal. So you see here, like when I ran it, I didn't use the dash D. So now Postgres has taken over this terminal. Uh, I don't want all the output for these three in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the dash D and what that does, it detaches it. So it moves it to a separate process. So it's not chewing up this terminal. Okay. So I do that. It's going to be downloading the containers and getting them all turned on. So I'll pause while it does that. Okay. So cool. Once it's done doing that, I now have these three containers going. So you can see that they have started. And really the next thing I need to do is head over to Minio and create a bucket. So I'm going to head over to not Minio. It's going to be local host. Uh, technically 9001 and that's going to take me over to Minio and the password here should be admin and password 
And if you're wondering, hey, where does that admin and password come from? It's in the Docker Compose file. So if you take a look at here under Minio, you'll see that here's where we set the username and password. Okay, but basically here I just click create a bucket and let's just create a bucket called warehouse. Okay, now we have a bucket. This would this could be easily any object storage that has S3 compatibility uh, for the same steps. This could be S3, but we're using Minio so that way you have a nice environment that just works completely off your laptop. So now that we have that, we're gonna head over to Dremio, which is gonna be on localhost 9047. And if it's the first time you're logging into Dremio, it's going to ask you to uh, set up your user. So I'll just set myself up. Okay. And, and now I am logged in. I'm actually, I want to change my password. So I'm going to go to account settings. And I'm going to reset my password to password 2024, password 2024, just because I'm going to have to expose that a little bit later. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now once I'm here in Dremio, what I'm going to want to do is add some sources. Okay, so you see here, there's a variety of different data sources we can add. So feel free to add, if you have other data sources, like you have an S3 account or an Azure account that you want to connect and start querying right here from your laptop, you can. But here we're going to connect our Minio, which we're going to use S3 because there's an S3 compatibility layer. So I'm just going to call this Minio, make it easy. And I'm going to use AWS access key, which will just be your Minio admin name and password. So admin password. Okay, I don't want to encrypt the connection because we're doing this locally on our laptop. So it's not a secure, there's no SSL certificates involved. Okay, then I'm gonna head over here, I'm gonna turn on compatibility modes, meaning I'm using that S3 compatibility layer. And then I'm gonna say, hey, we're gonna do this off the warehouse bucket. Okay, default C test format is iceberg if we wanna create tables. And basically I wanna set up a few connection properties here. S3 path style access, the reason being is that the way um, Minio expresses what bucket you're in. It's not as a subdomain, but as a part of the path of the URL. So we want to make sure that that's activated to true. And then two, we want to make sure we tell, hey, where is Minio, which is going to be at Minio 9000. And how, why is it called Minio? Well, that's based on the service name that you see here and the container name you see here, specifying that, hey, that particular container on the network is known as Minio. And with all that, we're good to go. If I hit save, that source should now be added. If we give that a moment, and there it is, Minio. Cool. Okay, now I just need to also add the Postgres source. So I click over here and I'm gonna add Postgres. So I find the Postgres symbol. And now I just have to fill in this information and we'll just follow the details that we have here. Okay, so we already did Minio. And here's the Postgres details. So we'll call it Postgres. The host is Postgres 5432. And then we'll come back to those over there. So Postgres. The host is Postgres. Again, why is that the why is that the host name? Because of the Docker Compose. So since we named it Postgres, okay, that's going to be its name on the network. Okay, and then this is going to be my DB. This is my user, and then my password. Okay, as far as your credentials go, and let me just confirm that I have. Yep, make sure there's no capitals. Okay, and then basically we save. And again, no encrypted connection because it's all working locally off my laptop. I hit save. Cool. And now if I look here, I can already see here under public sales data. Okay, I can already actually query the data. I can query the data directly from Postgres. So if I click over here, there's the data. Okay, wonderful. Okay, but what I want to do is I want to actually save this data as an iceberg table mainly because I want the data in my data lake. So that way when my analysts are doing analytics, they're not you know, interrupting the same database I'm using for my application. Okay, so that way they're not competing over resources um, and I'm not pushing my Postgres database to the, also it's gonna be faster because it's gonna be structured as parquet files. There's gonna be metadata that much more uh, effectively sort through those files. So there's gonna be a lot of benefits of having that as an iceberg table. So I'm gonna head over here to my SQL editor and we're gonna say, hey, create, table. Okay. And then again, the whole queries will get right over here just to save us some time. Okay. So I'll just copy over the query. 
And essentially what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, let's create a new table within our Nessie catalog because our Nessie can catalog iceberg tables. And I'm making it basically a copy of our sales data table from the Postgres table. Simple as a create table as statement from uh, in SQL. Okay, and I, hey, I just gonna run this. Okay, oops, let me just, well, there's no mistake. There's just sometimes if the that access non-existent resource that I call it something else. Oh, I called it Minio. I added a Minio source. My bad. I forgot to add Nessie. Oops. Okay. Uh, so we want to collect. We don't want to connect. I have the S3 source Minio, but what I really want to do is I want to connect Nessie as a catalog, because Nessie's our iceberg catalog, and I just totally blanked out. Okay. So basically, here we go. Nessie 120, and again, all these details are in the blog. Okay, and then again, none because this is just a uh, a, a stock Nessie install, so no authentication has been configured. Um, again, the bucket is going to be warehouse. Okay, and again, this is going to be all those S3 credentials, so AWS access key, which will be uh, admin, password, because it's just our Minio credentials. And then I want to add a property here, and essentially we want to add pastel access for the same reasons we did before. We're going to add our endpoint, so it points over to Minio 9000. Okay, and then we're going to add dremio.s3.compat to turn on that compatibility mode. So it's using that compatibility connection, turn off the encryption. And now I have a Nessie source. Okay, and again, the difference here is that Minio, I'm looking at Minio as just a storage source. I can go access any files that I have on Minio. Nessie is a catalog of iceberg tables, so I'm looking at it more like an iceberg, like a database catalog. Okay, so it's just a little bit different on sort of like how I'm interacting with the data. So now that I actually do have a Nessie source, so that was what was going on before, I didn't actually add a source called Nessie, I should be able to run this query. So now I click run. Okay, and it runs the query just fine. Okay, and that table's been created. And then just to show you that it's been created, I can head back over here to Minio, go back to this warehouse bucket, and you can see, look, there's the sales data table. And there's the metadata for the sales data table. Here is the data files for the metadata table. So it's all there. Okay, wonderful. So now that we've actually made, so we've just literally ingested the data. How simple was that? And again, these are any SQL that you can send to Dremio can be sent either via REST API, it can be sent to Dremio via Apache Aerofly, via JDBC, ODBC, which makes it really easy to automate with things like Airflow. Okay, now connecting superset to Dremio, now what we're going to do is we're going to want to turn on superset. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to turn on superset, so docker compose. I'm going to use dash D again, so that way it doesn't take over the terminal. And now I'm turning on superset. Okay, uh, docker compose, oh, I forgot the word up. Docker compose up, dash D superset. Okay, so now it's going to set up the, the docker container or that has a superset in it, and I'll come back once that's done. Now, while that completes and sets up, what I also want to do is make sure that we know, oh, no, actually, let me just take a quick look, see, yep, so, download the container, we're going to eventually need to connect and pass a URL to superset to connect to Dremio. That's going to be this URL right here. So I'm going to open up another tab just so I can work on it. And again, I would just put in the username that you set up when you first configured Dremio when you went to that localhost 9047. Okay, and then that's going to be my URL. So that's literally it. Okay, I just put in my username and password. It points to the where that Dremio uh, where that Dremio server is running, and then that's that. Okay, again, all in the blog so you can follow along. Okay, so basically once that is done, let's go take a look over here. Okay, that's finished. Now what we need to do is we need to initialize superset. So once the superset container is running, we need to run the superset init command. What this does is just kind of initializes it, so that way superset's ready to go. Okay, we should be already be able to log into superset, but it'll have some quirks if you don't initialize it. It sets up the sort of the core database that's, that, that backs it and all sorts of things. So you just run this command, wait for that to play out. Okay, cool, that's done. Okay, and now we can head over to this URL right over here. Doo, 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 doo. Where is that sweet, did the super sec, oh, localhost 8080. So I'm gonna head over to localhost 8080. Okay, and then again, we put in whatever our username and password is, which is again, this defined, um, I have it defined right over here. 
that's actually defined in the actual image. So if you wanted to change that, you would have to rebuild the image that I created for this particular exercise, but it's just admin and admin. Okay, so I put in admin, admin. Okay, and I'm logged in to superset. And now I would just go over here to settings, I'd go to the database connections to establish a database connection. Okay, and we say, hey, we're going to add a database. And basically what we do is we just select other. Okay, this means it just needs a URL. Okay, and again, I already got rid of that URL. So let me just copy it over again. So there's the URL. Let's cancel on the blog. Paste that in there. And again, I just replace the section that needs my username. And the section that needs my password. And before I submit, submit, I'll do a test connection just to make sure that it works. And you see right over here, connection looks good. Then I hit connect. Okay, now I've added Dremio. So now what I can do is, first thing I would do is I would add data sets. So I would choose which tables I want to have available to me. Then I would make charts from those data sets, and then I can add those charts to dashboards. Okay, pretty straightforward. But just to kind of add a data set, I would click plus data set. Then I would say, hey, which database I want. So the Dremio database. Then I'd say, hey, which sort of section. So I want the Nessie, because again, we want the iceberg version, which is going to be in our Nessie catalog. Okay, and then I can go here and say, hey, I want that sales data table. And now I have that there. I can create a data set and now create a chart from it. And I can create whatever kind of chart I like. So you can go around here and start playing with the different chart types and just basically configuring a ABI dashboard. And that's how, pretty much how easy it is. Okay, again, this was pretty straightforward. We got it done in less than half an hour. Um, but yeah, that's all it takes to create uh, the take data from Postgres, turn it into an Apache iceberg table and then be able to serve it up as a dashboard using Superset uh, with Dremio as sort of that middleman. It's delivering the data to Superset and helping ingest the data and move that over from Postgres to Iceberg. Um, and it works pretty well and it's pretty easy. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this exercise and it shows you sort of how easy it is. Play with, play now that you got all these tools set up, uh, play with it. And again, when you're done and you're ready to shut it all down, just go to a terminal and just type in Docker Compose down and that will shut everything off. And that'll stop all the containers and you'll be good to go. See you all later. Have a great day and enjoy.